Okay, hello everybody, uh, well all my pupils out there at the schools. Um, basically, I'm putting this lesson, Matthew Coates Guitar Lesson 11, uh, in order just to um, cl sort of clarify anybody who's unsure about the, um, anybody who's unsure in regard to the shapes of the chords and things we've been doing towards the end of the week. So straight away, London College of Music, Grade 1, um, the pupils in the schools know who they are. We've been looking at chord shapes, right? So we've been looking at chord boxes. So for instance, here we go. So when you get your chord, I'll just use the A one. You've got your six strings, six, five, four, three, two, one. They're the lines going down. The ones going across are the frets, the fret wires. This is obviously the big thick bit, which is this bit here. So basically, it's like holding it, it's like your guitars like that. Now, as one of my pupils today said, well, I can put the book like that, you see, long ways, which makes sense. So you're kind of reading the chord as though it's it, it's actually part of the, um, you're reading it the way the guitar neck goes and that. Anyway, I'm going to go through these chords because we were working on what was called rhythm, sorry, accompaniment number one. So I'll play the um, the accompaniment, and in the exam, the examiner will play this a couple of times. And while he's playing it, you've got to kind of visualise what sort of accompaniment would go with it. So, for instance, we've got um, this little melody from accompaniment accompaniment number one. an F sharp out, but you get the idea. So while da 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 da, so knowing your chords, the first chord's G. Now what we've done today is we've done. Now this happened in the Jingle Bells as well, so I can kind of do both pieces for the price of one here. <laughs> so what I've got is I've got these two fingers here that are working diagonal. Okay, so F S F finger string fret. So finger three of the left hand is going on the sixth string third fret. Finger two of the left hand is going on the fifth string second fret, and I get this. Okay. Now, eventually, on the G, you took your little finger there. Now, I know what you're all thinking, and I know what other teachers will think as well. Is why on earth is he doing that for when us when we do that? Yes, you can do that in some instances, but when you're changing from a G to a C. It makes sense to get used to step step. The pattern's good, see? The only real one, but it isn't a problem, is the D7. So basically, we we'll start with G, and as long as you try and miss out the first string, even if you hit it, doesn't matter. So this is accompaniment, yeah? Now we step step down a string, so look where fingers three and two have landed. And then we put our first finger there. So we've got the diagonal chord. We talked about this before. And then we go back to G. So that makes sense rather than doing that. See? Now then the last chord is D7. Look at that one. Now D7 is a triangular kind of shape. So here we are. We're at G. Now let's... There's a, Obviously if we're on C, that finger can stay there. This finger steps does a sort of jump over two strings and then this one helps itself and goes on the second fret first string and you strum from the fourth string so G from the sixth string step step down add first finger on the second string first fret for C strum from your fifth string and then finally go back to G sorry and then finally the D7 noticing that minimum movement so I've got from the C to the, sorry, G. I come from. Sorry, we're going from the G, aren't we? So yes, there's that first finger hovering, not from the C to the D7, the G to the D7. And then, of 
course we've got that. Now going from D7 to G we could use that shape because that's so there's another you know you're going from these two see how our fingers work at diagonals don't they um where you've got the you've got um this diagonal with these two fingers which is working like that with the d7 obviously adding the third finger on the second fret first string but yeah you've got the diagonal of g to c to g d7 now it makes sense to use that little pattern so that's another alternative finger into g it's the easier one and obviously includes the first string but make sure i'm doing that deliberately that these fingers are like that all right so there's that one there the g and obviously from the d7 to the g they that little diagonal shape can come across but i can explain that a little bit more in the lesson now on your sheet you'll see this the photocopy from the book right for the purposes of um, education of course we have got on here there's the G chord there's the C chord and lo and behold where's it at we've got the D7 shape there okay so there you go so that's that okay so basically when you do this little accompaniment uh, it would end up like da 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 Right, next on the um, on the list, well obviously Jingle Bells, we're going to be looking at the Christmas number, All I Want for Christmas, All I Want for Christmas is you, well we're going to be doing that next week, but for now it has to be said that we're just going to be looking entirely at um, all I want for Christmas next Friday. But we've started with Jingle Bells. Now on the guitar lesson 10, again I was demonstrating the change from a G, which we talked about before, then a C, and then an F. Right, so when you're playing Jingle Bells, again, it's this diagonal of these two fingers. So it's a step, step, a step, and a step. So you've got, you start with C, Jingle Bells, Jingle Right, and we had a good day yesterday actually doing that um, doing that one uh, which worked quite well it was a nice jazz arrangement as well so you got a different feel using C was actually C major 7 jingle bells and then you stop to F major 7 jingle all the way and then you got you know, so it added a different flavour and uh, we all managed to get through it. So that's that and that. Okay, so. Um, the other thing we want to mention is, well, not a thing is, We Will Rock You. Now, We Will Rock You, we, we're looking at the power chord. Now, I've talked about the power chord in the earlier lesson videos uh, that I did over the first lockdown, um, sort of April, May, June, and that I put some rock and pop ones on so I'm tending to mix it all up now for time so basically we start with a G now we started off by saying right we're gonna go now some of you might be saying I'm yeah that's not that deep but it works in G just for the purpose of the um, beginners with the power chord when you're getting used to it now I also said right if you put your finger there on the fifth string uh, sorry on the fifth fret sixth string right that is the fret in the middle apart right so we're going to to create the proper power chord we're going to step it over to the fifth string so it's a kind of diagonal and we're at fret three so we're an odd number remember when I've talked about odds and evens one three five seven nine going up the fretboard okay or one three five seven and then evens of eight ten sorry 
8, yeah, 8, 10, and 12, yeah? So this is G. How do I know it's G? E string, F, miss a fret, G, okay? So we've got the G power chord. Uh, what's it again? It's... Uh, and I'm just doing these two strings, the 6th and the 5th, so it's ba 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 Do it four times, it's about that. Then you're going to go to fret 6, which actually, if I go G... Now remember the musical alphabet gets to G and then starts at A again. So I'm at I'm at A there. Miss a fret B. It's in between A and B. So it, it's like a B flat because it's gone that way. So I go B flat. Then I go A. So that's the sixth fret. Then I go G. Then an F. And then back to the third fret. Rock you. So that was We Will Rock You, okay? Now, there's another little tune that I've been doing at a school, and I felt sorry I'd missed it out in a way. I keep missing out. It's the theme to Harry Potter. Now, I've given a quite a few people the, pro the proper arrangement. So basically, it's going like this. <laughs> something else which is isn't too hard anyway that bit I haven't got the sheet in front of me but the main theme so you've got that first bit so watch this so if I do it first this is the first bit first little phrase oh. all right so you copy that and then that and then the next bit right now look at that now what have I done there so I'm at 7th fret there and then we go to 10 9 8 now where that first finger's been you then go 8 7 6 and then we're home and dry with a B flat third string third fret and then it goes to this bit. Now look at those two fingers. Now a couple of my more advanced pupils are doing this. So we've got the second finger, which is basically on fret eight on the second string, and the first finger is on fret seven on the first string. So again, look at this diagonal going on. You know, it's all about shapes, isn't it? You know, so here we go. So it's second string first. Sneak the third on the eighth fret, and then that one's already there. So now watch what happens. It's a sequential idea, just about. Then you start with the first string on the sixth fret and the second string on the seventh. So it's sneak that in again if you want to be flush. So here we go. that to some people the eight okay there we are then so let's move on classical guitar grade one we've talked about the forest wakes now there's a tune that we've started looking at called 
metamorphosis, right? Okay, now metamorphosizing into something is, say, if we turn into something, which we don't do, but things like mythology creatures, supernatural creatures, vampires, werewolves, and stuff like that, <laughs> where we turn hairy, I'm beginning to, and it's not a full moon. Anyway, it goes like this. So that's that little tune there. So basically, when you're playing it, it starts with a D and an E. Now there's a quaver followed by a crotchet. How many beats in a bar? Three beats in a bar. So you would go one, two, and three. One, two. Now I'm putting the bass in. The bass is quite easy because it's just D's and A. D's and A's, but we, what I said was, let's get used to, providing we use the right fingers, let's get used to playing the melody first, and then we'll, you know, it's a bit like doing the right hand of the piano, as, uh, and then bringing the left hand in, isn't it, basically, so we'll bring the thumb in, which is the left hand of the piano, we're, we're using these fingers at the minute, well, or, as we stand at the minute, whatever works best for you, at this stage, because, the working hand is the important hand that's putting the notes on, okay? So it's like this. Yep, so D, E, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, second breath, third, second thing. that note the high A but anyway that'll if you play along at least it lets you hear how it sounds at the end of it so there we are I think I've covered everything there to get it up to date for the end of the week uh, I've talked about London College of Mu uh, Music accompaniment one which uses the chord shape sheet <laughs> well I'll say that quick uh, I've also led that into Christmas song of Jingle Bells with some similar chord patterns. Um, talked about FSF, finger string fret, uh, minimum movement, um, and I've played Harry Potter to guide you through that. And then I've got We Will Rock You as well in there, which is just sort of testing our knowledge of the power chords. Um, so yes, next week I'll be putting the Christmas tunes on. Okay, so we'll be looking at that. But you know, just have a, th have you know, it's interesting to listen to music on YouTube as well. You know, listen to the likes of uh, Michael Bublé, um, oh, Michael Bublé, Diana Krall, um. I've been quite impressed about the amount of students out there that actually that listen to this music, which is brilliant, you know, because it's the way the chords sound. It's that gorgeous sound, which is so magical, and it lends itself to movie music as well. Anyway, hope that video is of interest to you, and I will see you next week at school. Okay, well done, everybody, this week. We've had a good week. Most of the schools have really pulled the stops out. 
and in ukulele as well. Okay, bye.